Right, uh, let's uh, start here. At uh, Parliament today, Steinhoff's former CEO, Marcus Juste, is expected to explain his part in the scandal that's rocked the global retailer. It owns household brands like Pep, Ackermans, Russell's and Incredible Connection. This will be Joster's first public appearance since he abruptly resigned in December over accounting irregularities which saw the company's share price plunge by 95%. Can you believe it? The crash has had a profound effect on some of South Africa's pension funds which were heavily invested in that company. Now ENCA's Lester Kivitt is following that story for us. Uh, Lester, good morning to you once again. So, uh, in the previous uh, invitation to Parliament, Marcus Joster said the following, that on the basis that he would not be able to provide meaningful assistance, uh, he basically thought that um, there wasn't much really that should be expected of him. So, uh, what is likely to come out then? Well, that was then at the risk of Parliament subpoenaing Marcus Uester to appear before Parliament's uh, joint committees uh, and then answer for his role in that Stein of Saga, which put millions of government pension employees at risk. 1.1 million government employees whose pensions are invested through the Public Investment Corporation. Now, that matter then went to court uh, with the Parliament uh, threatening then to subpoena Marcus Uester. They then reached an agreement in chambers with his lawyers and Parliament, and he he then agreed to come to Parliament today, but the scope is very limited. He'll only uh, there, there was an agreement that he'd only be talking about uh, government's regulatory fr framework and that and how that may have led to the uh, Steinhoff saga. But now speaking to MPs over the course of the last week since Steinhoff and the former CFO Ben Lachranji appeared before Parliament last week, they're going to have a pretty difficult time to in, get those questions, to ask those targeted questions, and uh, and, and to get. Uh, uh, really uh, directed and pointed answers. We do know that Marcus Joster is already on the parliamentary precinct just uh, more than an hour than he, before he's expected to appear here. I'm here in room uh, V454, pretty small uh, committee room and already since about 8 o'clock people have already started gathering here. It's a, it's a much wanted ticket on the parliamentary uh, precinct uh, today with especially uh, the attention around Marcus Joster and Stein. If we, if we really expecting uh, uh, some really intense grilling and maybe even some fireworks yeah, between MPs and Marcus U.S. later this morning. Lester, also at the same time, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Balega Mbete, making it clear that his appearance at this hearing today is not a criminal investigation, nor is it a uh, civil inquiry to establish civil liability. So the question, therefore, is what's the purpose of this hearing if not to hold him accountable? Well, whoever testifies or, or gives evidence or, or makes presentations to Parliament does so in good faith and, and under oath. And while they may not be criminally be held uh, liable uh, for what they say, it is definitely uh, on their conscience as uh, South African uh, citizens, all South African citizens uh, are, could uh, stand the risk of being subpoenaed uh, to Parliament for whatever reason. So uh, Marcus Uster is, is obligated to answer whatever questions that are, are posed to him. Uh, quite truthfully. But what we have seen in the last few occasions where Steinhoff delegations and last week when the Steinhoff uh, former CFO Ben Lachranji appeared, they do come pretty well lawyered up and sometimes you do uh, spot uh, lawyers whispering into the uh, client's ear. This also speaks to Steinhoff saying that uh, uh, they are still awaiting uh, further forensic audit reports on just exactly what happened and so therefore they cannot answer on record until they found out what those forensic audit reports are saying. Uh, so while it does appear that uh, uh, the uh, uh, maybe a somewhat of a fishing expedition for, for MPs, I think it, it really speaks speaks to this uh, story being ventilated well within the public domain. 1.1 million uh, government pensions put at risk uh, during that Stein of Saga, losing as much as 95% of, of their value uh, during that turbulent uh, Stein of uh, period, starting in about December 2017. So
So plenty of questions to be asked, not only from, from Steinhoff and, 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 and Marcus Wurster now, but also uh, from the Public Investment Corporation and just uh, how well were they briefed and, and they prepared uh, for, uh, for the collapse of, of, of the Steinhoff company. Uh, but I think it's also in this air of uh, particularly ANC uh, MPs want to clamp down on, on perceived private sector uh, uh, corruption. Last week during the Steinhoff appearance, one ANC MP whispered in my ear and half jokingly says this is a battle between socialism and communism and I'll take that well, very well tongue in cheek from that particular um, ANC MP but you've also seen uh, uh, former ministers, now ordinary MPs, uh, uh, David Matlobo and Natin Tleko of, of, of the fire pool uh, of fame defending the fire pool of Jacob Zuma saying in last week sitting that, that the, the events uh, at, at Steinhoff uh, is a corruption of the highest order so this is the show of uh, trying to, to make uh, as if it's not just uh, a public sector government corruption but also a uh, private sector corporate corruption which is also uh, a, a, a societal ill in South Africa so there are these two waves uh, one really wanting to get down to how uh, government uh, employees pensions were put at risk and at the same time uh, for some MPs trying to really put a stick to the private sector saying you too are to blame uh, for, for South Africa's corruption uh, woes and you should also be held to book. Lester, just as a, a final question to you, um, we know that uh, in August uh, we, were, we were made aware that uh, there was some kind of investigation that uh, was being conducted by the Financial Sector uh, Conduct Authority as well as a criminal uh, investigation by the Hawks. Any idea of what's come out of uh, that probe thus far or if they are still ongoing? All still hangs on those forensic audit reports that are still outstanding in uh, in, in the probe into uh, into Steinhoff last week. Uh, the uh, Steinhoff's advisory board's uh, chairperson Heather Son saying they're still waiting on on several reports to finalise their investigation. At the same time, some disappointing remarks from the Hawks. They also briefed Parliament last week, saying that they've also hit a snag in trying to finalise this investigation. They say they've received three complaints regarding. Uh, uh, a criminal nature of uh, regarding Steinhoff, but to date they haven't finalized statements and saying that they too are also waiting uh, for those forensic audit reports and also waiting for information from their counterparts uh, I in Germany and the Netherlands. So it does seem as if the criminal investigation of the whole Steinhoff saga ha has somewhat hit a, a few speed bumps and they came under a lot of pressure from Parliament's uh, joint committee saying that action needs to be taken and those who are found to have benefited from uh, putting government uh, pensions uh, at risk should be held to, held to book and should be criminally charged. As of yet, it doesn't seem as if anything like that is going to happen soon. As I let you go, Lester, you indicated much earlier that uh, the former Stein of CEO, Marcus Joste, is actually uh, in the parliamentary precinct. Have you caught sight of him? What does he look like? I mean, this is a man that's not been seen in public since yeah, December. Just... I just tried to turn around to see who is, who is, who is around, but this room is quite <laughs> filling up. But, uh, usually people only start stepping into meetings about 10, 5 minutes uh, before these meetings. But already, as I said, from 8 o'clock this morning, people have been gathering, trying to get uh, what is uh, sure to be the hottest ticket in the House this morning. Uh, my colleague Nadine Teron, uh, she had see, uh, spotted Marcus Eustace on the parliamentary precinct at around about uh, just before 9 o'clock uh, this morning. He had entered through the public entrance of... Uh, of, of, of Parliament and was whisked away by a parliamentary security guard to a separate holding office uh, on, on, in one of the buildings here at Parliament. So we'll keep a camera trained on that door uh, to wait and see for the arrival of Marcus Hewis. I'm sure uh, there's going to be much anticipation for his arrival for one of his very few public appearances since the saga broke in December 2017. Live for us in Parliament, Lester Kivit, watching that story around Marcus Joste appearing before a parliamentary committee there.